In this video, I thought it'd be good to try and make this Kevlar or carbon fiber sheet with the bare minimum of tools. Now, if you had to buy something like this, it's going to hit you hard right in the pocket, especially if you wanted a custom size or a custom thickness. With this no vacuum method, you should be able to make your own Kevlar, carbon fiber or fiberglass sheet to pretty much any thickness you like. This Kevlar ended just a shade over the two mil I was aiming for, but not bad for my first successful attempt. Anyway, let's see how it was done. The first thing we need is a flat surface. So I found this abandoned window in a skip and used it because it was free. Although you could use melamine wood at a push. Then it's just a matter of popping out the seals and making a masterful cook with a glass cutter so that you have two pieces. Oh, f Remember, wear eye protection so you can see what a clumsy git you actually are. Now Kevlar cloth can be expensive, but I managed to get hold of this surplus bulletproof vest from eBay. The previous owner was shot in the face, so he didn't need it anymore. Once inside and the stitches removed, it turns out you get quite a bit of Kevlar for the £10 I paid for it. As this is just a practice piece, I decided to cut it down. Ceramic scissors work really well for this, unless you have some very nice metal scissors that you really, really hate, in which case use those. Nearly any sort of woven material has one mission in life, and that's to unravel and look really crap. So from here on in, we're going to be very careful with it. If you want to find out your final product thickness, put some calibers on and squeeze medium lightly. That will give you some sort of idea of how thick it will be if we vacuum form the Kevlar. But we're not going to do that, we're going to do a simple hand layup. So with the lightest of squeezes, the final product should be about two millimeters. Now we could make this directly on the glass itself, but I'm using some overhead projector plastic. And that's because if anything goes wrong with the release agent, you don't end up with Kevlar stuck between two sheets of glass. After marking the area for the resin, it's time for the release agent. This is a PVA version, but a release wax also works. I did try cheaper alternatives like WD-40, Vaseline and car silicon and that's how reliable they were. I find a foam brush works best but a cloth application will also do the job at a push. Now epoxy by its nature is sticky so we need a nice even coating that doesn't miss a spot. With that done the side with the release agent gets marked so that we don't get it wrong later on. For this I'll be using about 100 grams of epoxy mixed as per the instructions but for a cheaper option you could use a polyester fiberglass resin like Bondo if that fits the bill. The first layer of resin needs to be quite generous because this is the front face and it's seen so make sure it's about one millimeter thick and evenly coated but don't scrub at it or we risk damaging the release agent for later on. With the first layer placed on a stippling motion with the brush will help to pop any air bubbles camping underneath. Then a flat scrape will push the Kevlar into the resin and bring all the excess to the top. If you turn it over and have a look, air bubbles should be easy to spot and smash out. This looks pretty good, next layer. With every layer now, we're going to use a combination of firm pressing and light top up coats of resin with the brush. What you need to do is have the minimum amount of resin but still have the cloth wet. Finally, we're on the top layer and just like the bottom, we're going to need no pin holes or bubbles. So I'm going to use slightly too much resin. Last of all, on goes the top cellophane with the release agent side in. All that's left to do now is squeegee out as much excess resin as possible and any air bubbles along with it. Once the flat sheet of glass is on, I'm going to protect it and pile on some weight. You can't have it too flat or too heavy. Here's the resin left, not too bad. Now all resins are different, but a full cure with this epoxy will take between 12 to 24 hours. So we'll have a sneak peek, go in early and take a look. At this semi-cured state, you can bend it and form it into curves. And once dry, it'll harden and stay into that shape. But if you want it flat and glossy, don't fool with it. Right, we'll give it a quick wash and see what we've won. Well, this is the end result and it's obviously nice and hard and reasonably glossy. 
If I'm being critical, I should have squeegeed out a little bit more resin from the top and bottom layers and maybe put some more weight on. But for a first effort, it's not too bad. Well, I hope you found that video interesting or useful. And if there's anything you'd like me to make with the Kevlar, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time with a brand new project. Thanks for watching.